marvelous event. Uh, the great crowd speaks well. It's a great night to remember what a treasure this museum is and how important uh, the whole world of art is to refine our spirits and to lift our hearts and souls. I was asked to suggest to uh, give some background to the painting here. The painting obviously tells a story. If we want to know about that story, we're going to look into the Bible. And we're going to look into the first part of the Bible, which we know is the Hebrew Scriptures. Then we're going to look at the first book there. That would be the book of Genesis. And we're going to move past the first 11 chapters into the part that begins the story of Abraham. Story of Abraham, beginning in chapter 12, that will give the context for thinking about Lot. So uh, Lot appears as a nephew of Abraham, and uh, they are their people aren't getting along, so they have to separate. And uh, sort of out of custom, uh, Abraham gives first shot to Lot to where he's going to go. He gets to pick the good spot, in other words. As the story moves on, we see that uh, Lot gets in trouble at one point, and Abraham has to come and rescue him. We see a messenger is coming to uh, Abraham and to Lot, and as we begin to move through the story, we see how the, the, the story is contrasting the great faith and greatness of Abraham with uh, Lot, who is seen in, in inferior light uh, all the way through. So it's Abraham has to come and rescue him. And then um, Lot is in uh, those cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, located in that era, area. And Abraham uh, does that interceding on the behalf of the city. So you're going to save them, you know, if you had 100 or 50 faithful, he gets down to 10. And finally, uh, God is, uh, is uh, after this bargaining, he's going to save Lot and his family. And the story, the important part of it would be that uh, as they leave, as leaving the city, the two son-in-laws, or soon to be son-in-laws of Lot, uh, to be married to the two daughters here, decide to stay. So they don't leave, and then Lot is leaving, and this is the part of the story probably a lot of us remember is that Lot's wife turns and looks back, and to be turned into a pillar of salt, they ended up in a cave, so we now got uh, two, uh, three people and uh, without spouses or sexual partners, which begins to set the stage for the story. So as the story goes on then, uh, it is telling us here, the daughters are getting their father drunk and will have sexual relations uh, with him and will, as a result, uh, produce... Uh, two tribes of people, the Moabites and the Ammonites. Now, you might ask us, uh, what the point of the story in all of that, I think, is, uh, as we look back, uh, to locate that historically, you know, people talk about Abraham roughly being in a period like 1900 years before Christ. And in that setting, if uh, the story is told, it's very possible that the, the young women would be seen as uh, very bright and clever and getting themselves pregnant. Because in that whole story, the, and throughout that period, the patriarchal period, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on, um, having children is absolutely important. So it's very possible that they would interpret the story in that setting as... Um, cleverness on their part to get themselves pregnant, you know, and Sarah couldn't get pregnant and so on, uh, then it was fine for Abraham to take his uh, servant, the servant lady, and get her pregnant. So, we've got that sort of background. Just to fill in one point that you remember about what Lot, when the, the, the angels come to see him, the people in the town want to come and uh, take them and have sexual relations with them, thus sodomy. Uh, in our own vocabulary, and what Lot does at that point instead, following the laws of hospitality, is offer his daughters. Now, so that, in the story put back in 1900 before Christ, that you might see the daughters as being clever and getting themselves pregnant and so on. The story actually gets written down during the time of King David and King Solomon in all likelihood. That would be 10th century B.C. And then... The story has another meaning. 
That is that the Moabites and the Ammonites come from an incestuous relationship. It was a subtle put down of those two tribes which became enemies of the Israelites. So you look at the second uh, setting for the thing would be about uh, you know 10th century BC. There I think the message of the painting is, is the end of the story is something like uh, well, those Moabites and Ammonites are terrible people. No wonder where they're our enemies because they're the product of this incestuous relation. So let's take it up then to when the painting occurs, what, around 1650 or so. And what's the situation there, historical context? Well, it's what we commonly call the Counter-Reformation, 16th century of the Protestant Reformation and so on, and then we had the Council of Trent, and the Council of Trent uh, wanted uh, the church artists to uh, depict the biblical scenes in simple ways so that the people could understand them. And the Catholic community wanted to, you know, patronize the, the arts. The, the popes brought Marcino to, to uh, Rome to paint things, and it was a great flowering of art, and so on, during that uh, Baroque period. So uh, in that setting, you know, then we'd ask ourselves, well, what, uh, what is that telling us? Well, it was one thing, uh, the, the Catholic Church was trying to tell the story from its side and uh, use the world of art to, in a polemical way to defend uh, the Catholic positions against the Protestants. And this is going on in Italy that remains a very uh, Catholic country and so on. So now the painting is... Uh, is uh, all of the art during that time, commissioned and so on, is being used to pr propagate the message, and in this case, to tell the biblical story. So I might ask, uh, in that setting, you know, what sort of uh, meaning would we get out of it? Um, I don't know that for sure, but my guess is that it had a moralistic uh, tinge to it. And we got to remember it's in a patriarchal culture, all the way along the line here. In a patriarchal world, and so, um, and we had a, a lot of problems in how women were depicted often either as Madonna figures, Mary figures, or as whores, and somehow uh, people are going to the tempt men and so on. So when we get to, it's interesting contrast between that uh, depiction over there where the uh, initiator looks like it's locked and his daughter to here, where the daughters appear in one way or another to be conniving and are going to use an immoral practice to get their way. They won't wait like uh, Abraham did for God to give him a child. They are, they are impetuous. They're going to make it happen. They're in a controlling kind of position. So uh, it's at least possible that it was looked at in that patriarchal culture in a moralistic way. There's women again tempting men and causing problems and so on. <laughs> so the last context would be now, today, as, as we look at it. Um, my own sense, if I had to preach a homily on this or a sermon, <laughs> I, I would be very interested in what the original biblical meaning is. And the original biblical meaning has a lot to do with the failure to trust God as contrasted with Abraham, who does indeed trust God, and it becomes the father of many nations. I would put it in the context today of the great Abrahamic religions. Um, Judaism and Christianity and Islam, all of us say Abraham is our father in faith. We look to Abraham. And common in those traditions, and something that holds us together, is that sense that we must trust God, that God is in charge of the world, and we can't force God's hands, and we ought not try that. Obviously, this is going to be read for the first time in a post-patriarchal world and out of a feminist kind of critique if we try to interpret it today. And uh, part of that is going to be to see, well, to unmask the patriarchy, patriarchy and sexism that's portrayed in, uh, in the painting, to, to try to bring that out in one way or another. And, uh, but I would come back uh, to that idea of uh, that Lot is seen all the way through, and his line is inferior to Abraham, the father of faith. 